Okay, so we're going to be starting chapter 18. In the last chapter, Stella went bowling with her dad. Okay, she's really grateful, although her dad, um, she only sees her dad a couple times a year, but she's really grateful to have her mom. Right, so we just see her at the end, just hugging her mom out. <clears throat> so let's continue. Chapter 18. Today I turned nine years old, which means I'm big enough to make to take more care of myself. This year, my birthday is on a Saturday, so I don't have to go to school. Good thing, too, because I couldn't sleep last night thinking about the day ahead. <clears throat> Mom pretended not to remember my birthday last night when we were playing games and eating Chinese food. Mom, are we doing anything special tomorrow? I asked. I'm not sure. Should we? She said with a wink. Nothing special happens tomorrow. The most boring day ever, says Nick. I stuck my tongue out at him and opened my fortune cookie. I went to sleep a little worried, but I was pretty sure I could hear presents being wrapped and the smell of cake being baked in the kitchen in the middle of the night. So, when I hear Mom tiptoeing into my room and see light and candles, I know she and Nick didn't forget. They sing happy birthday twice. The first time in English and the second time in Spanish. I blow out all nine candles at the same time and feel extra lucky. On our birthdays, we also get to eat cake for breakfast. Mom made my favorite this year, coconut cake with a special type of caramel called cajeta. Then she put a bunch of sliced mangoes on top. I run to the kitchen to grab the plates while Mom and Nick chase after me. When I go to the kitchen, I see wrapped presents on the table. There's even one for Nick because Mom always says that we need to celebrate being hermano and hermana. Because I'm a really good hermana, I let him open his present first. But before that, I give him a card I made that has a drawing of a sea dragon on it. Sea dragons are like seahorses, but they look like a leafy dragons. Inside it says, to the best big hermano, love, Stella. I drew the sea dragon because if my brother were a fish, he'd be a sea dragon. He's all, he always takes care of me like the male sea dragons do. If you see, there's a little card. It says, the Best big hermano, and then it says love, sell, and then there's the sea dragon. So remember, the sea dragon's almost like the sea lion, but it's not because it has like little leafy parts. And here's your cake. It says, sea dragons always carry their young on their tails. Nick still gives me a piggyback ride sometimes. Plus, Nick really likes dragons in general. It's the only animal he draws. Thanks, sis. Mom says, ahora it's Stella's turn. I squeal and open up my four presents on the table, one at a time. The first is an envelope and inside are tickets for the Shed Aquarium. This is going to help me finish my fish project. I say, thanks, Mom. Way to go, Mom. Nick cheers. Then I open up the second present, James and the Giant Peach. Now you don't have to check it out from the library anymore, Mom says. Gracias, I say. I jump to, up to her and she kisses my cheek. Mom is the best. She used to try to give me baby dolls, but then she realized I like books and art supplies way more. The third present is a bigger box. It's 128 colored pencils, the fancy artist kind. Before, I only had 24. I also didn't have any of the metallic colors. Now, I'll be able to draw superheroes with metallic capes for my brother. I saw Stanley doing that at school the other day, and it looked really cool. You can use the metallic ones to draw details on your submarine, says Nick. We high-five. He's so smart. The last present is really small, like the size of a note. I open it. It's a card. On the front, it says, To la mejor hija, or to the best daughter. I open the card. Written inside is, Go to the garage. It's a surprise. I yell as I run to the garage. I love surprises. There, in the middle of the garage, is a red bicycle without training wheels. Mom and Nick like to go riding with each other around the neighborhood on the weekends. I always, I was always a little jealous, but I didn't have a bike without training wheels, so I would play at Jenny's instead. Awesome, I say as I jump up and down. Can we ride now? No riding until you eat your cake for breakfast, Mom weeks. Deal. We all shake hands on it. After two slices of cake, I put on my outdoor clothes and grab my helmet. I want to wear a pajamas, but Mom says she doesn't think it's a good idea. Stella, the rope will get stuck on the wheel, she warns. The three of us walk to our, our, our bikes to the park across the street to practice. 
I put on my helmet. I'm ready. I put on my helmet, and then she says, I put one foot on a pedal. The bike starts wobbling. I try to put my other foot on the other pedal. It wobbles even more. This is much harder than when I used to ride with training wheels. What if I fall? Then I look around. Worse, what if someone sees? I look at Nick and whispers, and whisper, this is scary. Nick walks over and holds the bike. It's okay, kiddo. Get both feet on the pedal. I do, and he holds the bike. Okay, now just pedal. I try, but I stop and put my feet on the ground. Mom, what if I fall? My lip is starting to shake. Mom walks over, and both of them look at me. Everyone falls at some point, Stella. Yeah, I'm pretty much the best at everything, but even if I felt a little bit at the beginning. Oh, it's, it's Nick, right? He's saying, yeah, I'm pretty much the best at everything, but even I felt a little bit in the beginning, says Nick. Then he rubs my helmet. Really? But, mi chiquita Stella, if you don't want to ride, you don't have to today, Mom says. It's your birthday and it's Stella's rules. Yeah, we can play video games and I'll let you beat me, Nick elbows me gently. I take a deep breath. <sighs> it's all of, it takes all of my courage, but I say, no, I'll try. I am stronger than I think. Right, Mom? Mom nods. It takes me about 10 tries with Nick holding the bike while I get started. Like the sea dragon, he knows when to let go so I can swim away on my own. Finally, I ride the bike a few times without any help. Before I know it, I'm doing loops around the playground with Mom and Nick. Each loop feels more natural and my legs get less shaky. They start to feel strong. Look at her riding her bike, how happy she is. She's even doing like a little like a little head movement, right? Like a little forward movement. Her little helmet. As I ride around, I can't help but imagine all the fun times I'll have riding my bike now with Nick and Jenny. I wonder if Anna knows how to ride a bike. Maybe all of us could ride together. That makes me feel excited, and I begin to pedal faster. Then, I wonder if Stanley knows how to ride a bike. I'm sure he'd be really good at it. But then again, I'm not so sure anymore. Stanley's not always the best at everything, just the best at most things. For a brief second, I imagine Stanley riding bikes with us, and I pedal faster and faster. And that's the end of that chapter. So she's not even getting ideas right. It's her birthday. She got to eat her favorite cake, which had coconut and cajeta. Now she's riding her little bike. She got she got four presents, right? The tickets to the aquarium. She got also James and the Giant Peach as a book because she really loves that book and she would always check it out. Third, she got what? Color pencils, right? Like that really cool set of color pencils. And what was her fourth gift? The bike. Right? The fourth gift was the bike without training wheels. So look how fun, how much fun she's having. Do you remember the time that you, uh, or if you, you still use them or if you don't use them? The time that you stopped wearing? Like either the time that you learned how to ride a bike with training wheels or the time that you left the training wheels? Do you guys remember that? We'll see what keeps going on in the next chapter. But now she's getting so much ideas because now she gets to have a lot of fun on her bike. Right? So we'll see.